Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today we've got a few little topics to go through regarding Conor Gallagher, Kaiseido, that whole situation, and a few others as well. One that's looking like it could be developing into a final transfer. But let's move straight into the video to start things off. We are starting off with West Ham confident of beating Tottenham to Conor Gallagher as James Ward-Prowse talks continue. Now, of course, that's on the West Ham side, James Ward-Prowse, that's nothing to do with us but Conor Gallagher. That situation is very much to do with Chelsea. And they apparently are confident of securing a deal despite seeing their opening offer of £40 million for Conor Gallagher rejected. And it mentions that we want closer to £50 million. He's also a target for Tottenham. And there's also optimism that West Ham will be able to get this done. Um, of course, they've had a bit of a long time interest. It mentions here that last year they also were looking at him after his good season at Crystal Palace. But where does this leave Chelsea? I thought that 40 million bid was actually quite a generous offer for uh, Conor Gallagher. Because, you know, when you think about it, that's a player that isn't you know a mainstay in the team he's not a top top player yet you know maybe one day he could be but at the moment we're seeing the in this Chelsea team short sure, Crystal Palace he performed brilliantly and got a lot of goals but in this Chelsea team there's the odd goal here and there maybe the odd assist but is he at the caliber of someone like Enzo Fernandez where we want Caicedo to end up being maybe not really and you know if we're, where are we going to play him is he an attacking eight so where does he take up that spot from someone else such as Enzo Fernandez when we push him further forward in the midfield? Or Christopher Nkunku, does he take over his spot as a bit of a 10? We don't really know where Conor Gallagher fits in this team. The one thing I will say to his credit, and it's something that's often overlooked, is that he is an absolute workhorse. He can run 90 minutes flat, basically. Conor Gallagher is a very, very good player for a system like Pochettino's because you need that strong press you need that stamina and is a very valuable squad player at the very least now is Conor Gallagher going to accept being on the bench and coming off for half an hour here half an hour there starting this cup game or we don't really know so in terms of him I think he could probably see him being sort of caught in two minds you know does he stay at Chelsea at the bigger club and try and make himself you know part of the main team but probably accepting that he is lower down in the pecking order or if he goes to a West Ham does this sort of resurge his goal scoring ability and all of that that we saw at Crystal Palace so it's an interesting one for him 40 million I thought again was a good offer and they are apparently going to continue and they remain optimistic so maybe something around the 45 million pound mark is where we'll see this settle Chelsea wanting around 50 I think you know it just makes logical sense you try and meet somewhere in the middle so 45 million is maybe where this will get done do I think we should sell Conor Gallagher for that money I think you take it I really do think you take it because it's 45 million that goes towards the next midfielder that we want to buy that maybe suits what we need at the moment we definitely need a number six way more than we need someone who's a bit of a hybrid 8 10 in this team right now so I would take it I'd be really sad to see Conor go because he is you know he's one of the academy guys he's had some good spells here and there but I'm just not sure if he will ever be that guy you know a top top European Cup winning you know final scoring I don't think he's the guy that's going to be on the end of a goal scoring chance in a Champions League final or you know consistently gets you 15 plus goals in a, in a league campaign or something like that from midfield like I just I don't know if he is that guy in the end but I do have a lot of love for Conor Gallagher so if he stays you know obviously I'll be happy with that as well but I think for this kind of money I think if I was Chelsea I'd be saying let him go and then here we have an update from Fabrizio Romano it is an exclusive report saying that uh, he provides a positive Chelsea update saying they will attack the situation it is regarding Caicedo as you can see pictured here now he says despite some talk of this deal stalling Romano insists it's still on and expects Chelsea to keep trying to attack the situation in order to finally land the talented young Ecuador international his direct quote was despite what's being claimed elsewhere I'm told negotiations are ongoing for Chelsea and Moise Caicedo no changes and then there's obviously more here he said it's not easy to negotiate with them they're not accepting 70 plus add-ons they want more than this and what we're seeing is that Brighton are being 
very iffy in these negotiations because every time apparently we're meeting with them they're saying add Colwell in and we'll give you Caicedo for you know whatever the number might be I'm making it up but let's say it's 40 million and Colwell or something like that and Chelsea are saying no 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 he's not even part of this negotiation at all you can forget mentioning him we just want to give you cash and then they're coming back at us and saying okay we reject that notion we come back at them okay how about 70 plus add-ons no Colwell plus this and it's just an absolute mess from everything we're hearing because Chelsea are saying no this is never gonna happen we know we're gonna move on if this is what you're gonna do Caicedo obviously was promised a move it was very silly of him i think to sign that new deal in january i think it was last year or last season and agree to stay there and then get sold in this window but without any sort of release clause or anything like that brighton are under no obligation to sell so he's put himself in a really dodgy situation here he needs to start kicking up a fuzz if he wants the move otherwise it looks like chelsea maybe will continue trying but if nothing happens this one is going to drag on and on and on and i think that's really at the detriment of chelsea we need to be getting our players in now ready for pre-season learning this new system under poch so that we can you know perform in the premier league and in the cups this season and I, the longer this goes on the worse it's going to get so chelsea need to get this done or walk away and say you know what we're going to start pushing for Lavia Liverpool are making grounds in that deal so if we want to go that way I think we need to start doing that sooner rather than later any other player that of course we could be interested in that position there's a few that are in up in the air at the moment if we are going for them I think we need to start doing it now because it's not long until the season starts now we've only got a few pre-season games left and then we'll be into the season so this one is crucial for Chelsea to get done quickly then the next report we have is that Callum Hudson-Odoi is pushing for a Chelsea exit and he has agreed terms with Fulham. Now there's not much else to this article other than the fact that in terms have now been agreed with Callum but the problem is apparently Chelsea aren't looking to sell to a Premier League club hence why we've offered him out to Lazio where of course Mauricio Sarri is, we mentioned that in a previous video but he's agreed terms with Fulham and for him I can understand I'd much rather go to Fulham than you know Lazio um, I think that would be a really good move for him and I could see him performing potentially in this you know lower Premier League team but Chelsea really not looking like they're going to accept that and the reported fee is far lower than I thought I think in my previous video I mentioned I thought it would be 10-15 million and I thought maybe even that is a bit low but it looks like it's maybe even going to be less than 10 million pounds for Callum has an to leave Chelsea so when you think of that bid we got from Bayern back then if only that injury hadn't happened then his career sort of started spiraling down imagine what could have come of Callum Hudson Adoy but we'll see where this one goes you know if he's agreed terms with Fulham I think we should sort of respect him a little bit more and say look you know you're not going to a Arsenal Liverpool Man United like some Chelsea youth players have Fulham I'm fine with them going there they're, they're not a massive rival of Chelsea's in terms of direct com uh, competitive threats um, of course locally that's a different case but on this one I think Chelsea should let him go but it looks like we're trying to push elsewhere and get him you know a, a foreign club which I can understand the reasoning but I don't think it's really necessary then in this report we have another exclusive through court offside and it says Chelsea close to agreeing terms with attacker who's also a transfer target for Arsenal and as you can see pictured it is Mohamed Kudus now this is a, of course an attacking midfielder as it mentions here so this would maybe be a sort of replacement for someone like Conor Gallagher should they end up leaving he could be on the roof move for about 40 million pounds so it would make sense you know we'd basically be just recycling that cash that we'd be getting from West Ham if we were to let Conor Gallagher leave and we'd be getting someone like Mohamed Kudus now further down in this article it does go down to mention Chelsea have registered their interest and are even close to agreeing personal terms that's what's close at the moment it looks like a contract offer is pretty much done but no offer has been placed yet this is through Ben Jacobs he has a contract until 2025 and he is keen to leave apparently he is also not training with the full squad or something along that lines and he has already rejected an extension back in April he's going to cost around 40 million Brighton also interested as well as Arsenal have shown some genuine interest so this will be an interesting one to see how it sort of pans out you know are Chelsea gonna now that we've you know potentially agreed terms with him 
and we're just going to push in, get that 40 million bid in, and this will be another young attacking player that will join the club. I guess as a sort of rotation option with someone like Nkunku, because I don't think Nkunku is going to be a striker for us. I would be surprised, but I do think he'll probably feature here and there in the striker role. It'll be an interesting one to see how this pans out. I don't think this will be a case of him joining and going out on loan to, you know, the, the feeder clubs. I don't think it'll be a case of that. So be interesting to see how this pans out, but he is a very talented player, so I'm all for this. But that is going to be the end of the video, guys. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a thumbs up on it. Hit subscribe and let me know what you think of these topics down in the comment section down below. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.